Now, SpaceX had the contract for Artemis III. Um, they're be, by the way, I love SpaceX. It's an amazing company. The problem is they're behind. They push their timelines out, and we're in a race against China. The president and I want to get to the moon in this uh, president's term. So I'm going to open up uh, the, the contract. I'm going to let other, uh, other uh, space companies compete with SpaceX. The first crewed moon landing in more than half a century might not be pulled off by SpaceX after all. NASA may be sidelining the company and considering a different option to land its astronauts on the moon later this decade. Acting Space Agency Chief Sean Duffy suggested during TV appearances on Monday that NASA is opening up the high-profile U.S. moon landing contract to other bidders, largely because Elon Musk's SpaceX has faced mounting delays with its Starship lunar lander. Back in April 2021, NASA awarded Elon Musk's company a $2.9 billion contract to provide the first crewed lunar lander for the Artemis program. The vehicle, a modified upper stage of SpaceX's Starship Mega Rocket, is supposed to carry astronauts to the moon during the upcoming Artemis III mission. But NASA clearly isn't satisfied with the pace of development, and now things are getting shaken up. Starship has had its fair share of both failures and successes. The first couple of flights this year didn't go as planned. Both ended in explosions not long after Starship separated from its super heavy booster. However, things started to improve with the last two launches. Still, there are some major hurdles ahead. These include an attempt to catch both the descending super heavy booster and the Starship upper stage using the launch tower's mechanical arms, known as chopsticks, a critical in-orbit refueling test that's been described as the single most crucial milestone for missions beyond low Earth orbit, and a full uncrewed moon landing and ascent demonstration. SpaceX has also quietly admitted that Starship might not be ready by 2027. A recent update on the company's website under the Mission Moon section now lists commercial cargo missions to the moon in 2028 and to Mars in 2030. The estimated cost? Around $100 million per metric ton, or about $100,000 per kilogram of payload. So Duffy isn't wrong. SpaceX is moving more slowly than originally expected. That's why NASA is now considering other options. The president and I want to get to the moon in this president's term, Duffy said. So I'm going to open up the contract. I'm going to let other space companies compete with SpaceX, like Blue Origin. Two years after SpaceX was awarded the initial contract to build NASA's lunar lander, Jeff Bezos' company, Blue Origin, won a second contract, this one worth $3.4 billion, to develop another human landing system. Blue Origin's lander, called Blue Moon, is designed to carry astronauts from lunar orbit down to the moon's surface, and then back up again. But it's more than just a ride. Blue Moon will also serve as a temporary home base, providing life support and shelter while astronauts conduct scientific work in one of the most extreme environments imaginable. This lander is intended for the Artemis V mission, the third planned crewed moon landing under NASA's Artemis program, following SpaceX's roles in Artemis 3 and 4. But comments from Duffy suggest that Blue Origin could even be in the run for Artemis 3, which will be the first human lunar landing since Apollo 17 in 1972. The original plan is that for Artemis 5, Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander will launch separately and head to lunar orbit. There, it will rendezvous with a cislunar transporter, a propellant delivery vehicle developed by Lockheed Martin to be refueled in space. Once topped off, Blue Moon will dock with NASA's Gateway, a planned small space station orbiting the moon that will serve as a science outpost and crew staging area. Meanwhile, four astronauts will arrive at Gateway aboard NASA's Orion spacecraft. Two of them will transfer into Blue Moon, descend to the lunar surface, and spend about a week working on the moon. After their mission, the lander will return them to Gateway, where they'll rejoin Orion for the trip back to Earth. Unlike SpaceX's Starship, which is highly futuristic and ambitious. Blue Origin's HLS follows a more conservative design approach that could lead to more steady progress. But even so, major technological leaps are still required to get it operational. One major hurdle for both companies is in-space refueling, something that's never been done before at scale. Another challenge is dealing with liquid hydrogen boil-off, a long-standing issue in rocket engineering. Hydrogen needs to be kept at extremely cold temperatures, just a few degrees above absolute zero. And in space, it tends to evaporate quickly, often within a day or two. That's a serious problem for missions where the lander needs to stay on the moon for a week or more, which is exactly 
what Blue Origin is aiming for. If the company wants to support longer stays or more ambitious missions in the future, solving hydrogen boil-off is a top priority. Running out of fuel on the moon, with astronauts on board, simply isn't an option. On that note, Blue Origin just announced a major milestone. In a post on X, they shared, to sustain lunar missions and open the rest of the solar system, refueling spacecraft in space will be critical. Working with cryogenic propellants like liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen can be challenging. Blue Origin teamed with NASA Marshall at their TS-300 thermal vacuum chamber to demonstrate the transfer of these propellants. They went on to explain that the Blue Origin Utility Transfer Mechanism, UTM, builds on the company's long-standing experience handling liquid hydrogen and oxygen, gained from working on New Shepard and the second stage of New Glenn. In testing, the team performed multiple fuel transfers and connection-disconnection mate-slash-demate operations, with the UTMs exceeding all performance requirements. These transfer mechanisms are a critical piece of the puzzle. They'll enable Blue Origin's transporter vehicle to dock with the Blue Moon Mark II lander and carry out in-space cryogenic propellant transfer. Then there's New Glenn, the heavy lift rocket that will launch Blue Moon. While its debut mission was a success, Blue Origin still needs to prove that it can land the booster back on the launch pad, a key step toward full reusability and lowering mission costs over time. In the meantime, we might see a moon-ready spacecraft from Blue Origin even sooner. The company has been quietly developing a smaller lander, the MK-1, originally designed just for cargo. This version wouldn't need in-space refueling and could be ready for its debut flight as early as next year. Of course, SpaceX isn't exactly thrilled with NASA's decision. Elon Musk expressed doubts that Blue Origin could speed up its timeline enough to beat SpaceX to a crewed moon landing. Blue Origin has never delivered a payload to orbit, let alone the moon, Musk posted on X Monday, later clarifying that he meant a useful payload. He even made a bold claim, saying that SpaceX is moving like lightning compared to the rest of the space industry. Musk went a step further, confidently predicting that Starship will end up doing the entire moon mission on its own. Mark my words, he said. To be fair, SpaceX already had a plan to return humans to the moon using only Starship, long before NASA brought Blue Origin into the picture. This was the original concept Elon Musk revealed at the International Astronautical Congress in 2017. It didn't involve NASA's SLS rocket or the Orion spacecraft, just what we now know as Starship. That early plan was ambitious. SpaceX proposed landing either 100 people or 100 tons of cargo on the moon. That's far beyond what NASA requires for the Artemis missions. And the concept was a lot simpler, too. It relied on a single crewed vehicle, with no need for docking or rendezvous in lunar orbit. The plan involved launching a crewed starship into an elliptical Earth orbit, refueling it in space, then flying it straight to the moon, landing, and eventually returning directly to Earth. Starship would use its heat shield and fins to survive atmospheric re-entry and land back on Earth. No Orion capsule or SLS rocket required. However, when SpaceX submitted Starship for NASA's human landing system, HLS, competition, they dropped the heat shield and fins from the proposal. Without them, Starship couldn't return to Earth on its own. Many saw this as a strategic move to align with NASA's requirements and to avoid competing directly with Orion and SLS, which are key to maintaining congressional funding for Artemis. Some even speculate that NASA didn't want a lander capable of returning astronauts to Earth, as that might undercut its own programs. One major advantage of returning Starship directly to Earth from the Moon is that it makes refurbishment and reuse much easier. Once back on Earth, Starship can be inspected, repaired, and quickly turned around for another mission. That kind of maintainability is essential for building a sustainable lunar program. Compare that to trying to reuse a Starship that only travels between lunar orbit and the Moon's surface. Maintenance in space, or worse, on the Moon, would be a nightmare. Detailed visual inspections, part replacements, and even full engine swaps are often needed. Right now, we don't have the infrastructure in lunar orbit or on the moon to support that kind of upkeep, and we won't for a long time. Of course, there's always a trade-off. The SLS and Orion systems include a proven launch abort mechanism with a dedicated motor to pull the crew capsule away in case of failure. Starship doesn't have that. While it will likely feature some level of launch abort capability, it's not nearly as robust. That means Starship will have to prove itself with an extremely high reliability record, 
possibly even something like 100 consecutive successful launches, before NASA allows astronauts to fly on it. If Starship isn't rated for crew by the time the moon mission is ready, there's a possible workaround. NASA could use a Falcon 9 rocket to launch astronauts aboard Crew Dragon into orbit. From there, the Crew Dragon would rendezvous with an uncrewed Starship, launched separately. After docking, the astronauts would transfer into Starship, and Dragon would return to Earth. Starship would then continue the mission to the moon, just as if the crew had launched on it directly. Given the repeated delays and cost overruns plaguing the Artemis program, it's not hard to see why the NASA chief is looking for a faster path, especially with the clear goal of beating China back to the moon. The Artemis 3 timeline has already been pushed back several times, not just because Starship is still in development, but also due to issues with spacesuits, the Orion capsule, and other tech. Remember, Orion is the vehicle that will carry astronauts to lunar orbit, where they'll transfer to a separate lander for the descent. Originally planned for late 2024, Artemis 3 was delayed to 2025, then to September 2026, and later to mid-2027. Now it looks like NASA is eyeing 2028 as the new target, according to recent comments from Duffy. So far, the Artemis program has completed just one mission, Artemis 1, which successfully sent an uncrewed Orion capsule around the moon and back in late 2022. Next up is Artemis 2, which aims to launch four astronauts on a 10-day journey around the moon. That mission is currently on track for February next year. But is beating China really the only goal? As Elon Musk once said, a permanently crewed lunar science base would be far more impressive than a repeat of what was already done incredibly well by Apollo in 1969. He's got a point. If we want to go beyond flags and footprints, we'll need to stay on the moon. That means building a permanent outpost, one that can serve as a testbed for technologies we'll need for Mars and beyond. That's the real leap forward. Of course, getting there won't be easy. It'll take time, funding, and a lot of trial and error. And the lunar lander is a critical part of that puzzle. The more capable it is, the more we can do. Whether it's built by SpaceX, Blue Origin, or another company, each contender faces its own set of challenges. But the goal remains the same. Build a long-term presence on the moon and use it as a launch pad for the rest of the solar system.